turn. You can call it anytime you want. Anytime you want. Early in the morning, right. late at night, in the midnight hours, when you're by yourself, when yes, you work a bunch of people, in the midst of danger, call it. Call it. Call it. He'll answer. He'll answer. He's not a God that won't answer. Right. I know if you call him, yes, sir. he's going to answer. Yes. Yes. Peace. Amen. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I feel good today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Yes, sir. See, Christians ain't got no business being sad. No. Amen. Dean no. used to call them sad, sad, sad. That's right. See, we ain't got no sense of being no sad, sad Christians. Because we got too much to look forward to. Amen. Amen. And we got Jesus. Amen. And Jesus is enough to take care of whatever is going on. Amen. He's able to do it. And he will do it. He wants to do it. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes. Uh, this morning we're going to turn to Isaiah. 52nd chapter, beginning at the 13th verse. Behold, my servant. Mm -hmm. Y'all ready? Yes. Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. That means he's going to be wise. He's going to do the right thing. Right thing. Yeah. He shall be exalted. Mm -hmm. That means he's going to be lifted well high above everybody. Yes, sir. And extolled, look to, and praise, and Thank worship. You. And be very high. Very high. Just like the devil is very low, yes. Jesus is very, very high. high. That's what he's talking about. This is Isaiah now. 600 years before Jesus came. Yes. Now I want you to hear what he had to say about Jesus. What's going to happen to Jesus and how it's going to happen. Yes. Amen. And I always go back to this because in school I didn't learn from him at one time. No. I wish I had somebody. Yes. You know, I, I didn't learn school from going to class one time and hearing it one time. You. you got to hear it over and over and over. Yes, Amen. And that's how you get it. You see? Now, if you look like old Wonder Hot Trump got over how he did, because he kept saying the same dumb stuff over and over and over and over, because that's how you learn. That's how you get brainwashed. You hear it over and over and over again and you accept it. So therefore I'm going over this. And I'm going to keep doing it because it's the gospel. And I was called to preach the gospel. Behold my son, talking about Jesus, shall deal prudently, wisely. He shall be exalted and extolled and very, be very happy. And as many were astonished at thee, his visage was so marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. So shall he sprinkle many nations. The kings shall shut their mouths at him, for that which had not been told them shall they see. And that which they had not heard shall they consider. Amen. You be seen. This morning we're talking about Jesus, the strong man. Repeat that. Jesus, the strong man. Amen. Now we're going to show you what made him the strong man. Amen. 
He said, my servant shall deal prudently. Jesus went around and he came to his own. And they received him now. Yes. Amen. And I'm talking about the Pharisees and the scribes. They represent those who hold the religion and the teaching of the religion. Yes. Amen. When he came to them, they refused him. Amen. And, and But Jesus went and talked to everyone. In that whole area. See, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, the world, that's us, as all the people on the planet, that he loved, that he gave his only begotten son. That means that's the only one came out of him. Hallelujah. The only son he had that was begotten out of him. Amen. The, the Father and the Holy Spirit. Yes. Amen. Only him was able to do God's will. Only. Amen. So he said, my, 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 my servant will deal prudently. Jesus went around to the whole area of Palestine. They saw him. He taught everywhere he went. Yes. And everywhere he went, there were multitudes of people. Yes. Amen. And they brought their sick to Jesus. Yes, and the Bible says he healed them all. Oh. Amen. And then the Bible gives you some example of, of the healing he did. Amen. The leper came to him. And then ten lepers came and they were healed. Amen. The woman that had the issue of blood for 12 years long. She went to many doctors and couldn't get no help. Amen. He healed her just by her touching the hem of his gun. Amen. Jesus Healed. He healed the, the lame man that, that couldn't walk. Amen. He got up and walked. Cornelius' uh, child was sick. Jesus healed him without even going there. Amen. He just spoke the word and this person was healed. Amen. He dealt prudently before the Lord. Amen. He preached in the synagogue. Amen. And, and told him the truth about his father. Yes. And they chased him out. Yes. Amen. They did just like the Israelites had done through history. God sent the prophets and they killed him. Yes. Amen. <clears throat> so Jesus was on a mission. Yes. And it says here that he shall be exalted. Amen. He had to be, I heard Jesus say, if I be lifted up, I shall draw all men unto me. Lifted up. What is he talking about? He's talking about being on the cross. He ain't talking about not lifting up his name. He's talking about his body being crucified and lifted up before men. So the book says here, as many were astonished at the, I'm going to get to the meeting. His visage, his visage, that's his face. Got that? His visage was marred more than any man. Marred. What is marred? What are we talking about? Well, I'm talking about at least clay that you work with. And you, you, you made this image. And then you took it and you didn't like it. So you messed it up. And started all over again. Amen. His visage was marred more than any man. In other words, there's a man on earth that be worse than Jesus. His visage was marred. Amen. How did that mark? Well, in the New Testament, they got a thing called scourge. <clears throat> you don't hear people talk about that much. Preachers don't talk about that, but the book do. Yes. 
book Jesus even said. In John, he said, I'm going to Jerusalem. And there, they're going to beat me down. And then he said, I shall be scourged. Why scourged? Because scourge is what uh, made his visage so hard. They beat him with the scourge. The scourge was a whip with 12 uh, uh, strings in it. 12 is like one whip with 12. And at the end of each uh, a whip, there was a piece of metal tied there. So that it really hurt you. So when you were getting hit one time, you were getting hit 12 times. Every time he hit you once, you would hit 12 times. And those little pieces of metal stuck into the flesh. Amen. And it stuck in so deep that the, the whipper had to snatch to get it out. And as he snatched that scourge, blood and flesh come out. Amen. They hit Jesus at least, the law says, 39 times. Now you do that times 12, and you see how many times he was hit. They hit him in the front. They hit him in the back. They hit him on the bottom of his feet. They hit him on the top of his head. His visage was so hard. See, now that's making sense. His visage was so hard. More than any man. His face, they didn't just beat his body. They beat him all in the face. Beat him in the head. Amen. And Jesus, guess what? He never said a word. Nah, there ain't no weak man. That's why I say he's a strong man. Yeah, Jesus is strong man. Yeah, that was, that was, listen, listen to this. It's saying, and his form as the rest of his body. That's still verse 14. This form, <clears throat> more than the sons of men. In other words, ain't nobody been beat like Jesus. No. And so shall he sprinkle many nations. The kings shall shut their mouth. <laughs> they thought they knew what was going on. For that which had not been told them, shall they see. And that which they had not heard shall they consider. Because they beat Jesus so bad, we had to talk about it. Now, <clears throat> let's, let's turn the page. You'll be at Isaiah 53. Then Isaiah goes on to say, Who has believed our report? See, when you tell the story, even if I tell the story today, a lot of people don't believe it. They didn't believe it then. Isaiah said, who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? That means that arm is talking about the power. See, whenever you see <coughs> you the arm of the Lord, it's talking about his power. That's what that means. Anytime you see that, talk the arm of the Lord, it's talking about God's power. Of whom did he reveal that power to? And then he talks about it in verse 2. Yeah. He used the pronoun for he shall grow up. He, talking about Jesus. Before him, him is God, as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. Now, look what I want you to look at. You ever seen an old, old log laying on the ground? And, and then you see a little twig coming out of that log. You ever seen that? With a little twig coming out of what look like it's dead, but it ain't dead. A little twig coming out of it. Well, the, 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 the root out of dry ground, the dry ground is Israel. You know, they're dead for all particular reasons. Amen. But he, out of that dead, God brought life. He shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of the 
background. Now watch this. He had no fall, no comeliness. No fall. What are we talking about? He wasn't like Mr. T with muscles. He wasn't like Samson or David with muscles. He had it. Look at what he said. He had no form. That's what that form is talking about. His high look. No, no comeliness. Listen And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Now, this is the real story. Right out the book. But then, but then, Put this little white Jesus on the wall and, and, and have a crying on the head with one or two drops of blood. Come on now. Yeah. That ain't, the book tells you he had no comeliness. Yeah. And when we see him, there's no beauty that we should desire. In other words, Jesus just looked like another guy that you wouldn't look at twice. That's what this is saying. No comeliness. And when we shall see him, there's no beauty that we should desire him. You know, we see him go by, we say, wow, we ain't gonna say nothing. Guy come by in a nice suit, oh, wow, he's sharp. Jesus walked by, you ain't gonna pay him no attention. Cause he don't want no attention. That's what we don't get. He's despised. His own people despised. And rejected him. A man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. We hid our, 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 our faces from him. See, when they saw him, they just couldn't take it. They beat Jesus so bad that they, they couldn't even stand and look at him. He said, Did they tell you right here? We hid our faces. Hid face. We didn't want to see that. We hid our faces. Amen. From him, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. But yet, he's the Son of God. Listen to this. Surely, verse 4, he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. What is he talking about? Jesus came not only to die with the cross. But he came to heal God's people. Yes. Because the devil had done what? He had afflicted. He had afflicted God's people. Amen. What kind of affliction? Leprosy. Mm -hmm. Mental illness. People with devils and demons. People with lame and couldn't walk. People that had bad hearts. People that had bad blood. Diabetes, people with, 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 with strokes and heart attacks, people who are old and limp, they brought them to Jesus. Yes, sir. Yes. And Jesus, the Bible says, he healed every one. When there's a multitude, now we ain't talking about a few people, we're talking about multitudes of people. Yes. And Jesus healed every one. Jesus was the strong man. Still is. Somebody said, somebody gave him a donkey, and he gave the donkey back, and the donkey couldn't keep up. That's how busy Jesus was. You know, Jesus walked fast, because he had plenty of stuff to do. So surely we did esteem him stricken and smitten of God. We blame God for what happened to Jesus. But he was wounded. Watch this. He was wounded for our transgressions. For the sins we did. Our fathers did. And their fathers. And on and on. He was wounded for us. He took the blow for us. As they say, he took one for the team. <laughs> Amen. He took one. He was bruised. Now wounded. Now, how was he wounded? That whip. That's how he was wounded. He was 
wounded with that whip they beat him with. Amen. He was wounded with that spear they stuck in his side. Amen. And the rest were bruises. Jesus, when they got Jesus, they took Jesus to Annas' house. Annas was the, the chief priest at that time, where he wasn't. But he had been. So they took him to Annas' house. John tells you that. And then when they got to slapping him around and examining him, then they took him to Caiaphas' house, who was the chief priest at this time, and who was the son-in-law to Annas. They slapped him around, examining him, beat him, and then slapped him, hit him with their knuckles, and, and who hit you? Bam! You know, that kind of thing. It just act stupid. And then they took him, now this is the second place, now we're going to the third place. They took him to Pilate. Amen. And then Pilate examined him and, and, and found out he was a Galilean and sent him to King Herod. Now this is the third examination he didn't have. And every way he went, they beat him, they slapped him, they, 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 they talked about him, and, and all of that. Amen. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, get this. We are here. Yes. By his Christ. What he took for us. Amen. He wasn't weak. I'm going to show you in a minute. He was the strong man. Amen. And all we like sheep have gone astray. We turn everyone to his own way. And the Lord have laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Now listen to that. All these things, I ain't told you everything they done to him yet. But he ain't opened his mouth and, and complained about nothing. He ain't even said out. He took it. Why? Because he's God. How you hurt God? Mm -hmm. How you hurt the one that, that, that created you? You can't. But they didn't know that. <laughs> and the devil didn't know that. Yeah. Amen. See, mm -hmm. he came. One thing you got to remember about this. In Genesis, yeah. the devil fooled Eve. Okay. Huh? He tripped. And he fooled them into eating that food. And disobeying God. Well, you need to understand that whatsoever anybody sow, you're going to reap. I don't care if you're an angel, a god, or a devil, or a demon, whether well, you're going to reap what you sow. So the devil tricked Eve in the garden. And he was tricked at a tree because they didn't know he was God. They thought he was just a prophet. Amen. And they were going to beat him down and kill him. And they thought they killed him. But they didn't kill him. I heard Jesus say, no man take my life. Listen to that now. No man takes my life. I'll lay it down. And if I lay it down, I don't pick it back up. You see? Listen to that. He was oppressed and afflicted. He opened not his mouth. He was brought as a lamb to swallow and as a sheep before her shield. Now, of all the animals, when they get killed, lamb don't say nothing. Bad. But when they let pig, he be kicking. That, 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 that cow, he'd be kicking and hollering and screaming, trying to get away from him. But the lamb, he just be 
gives up his life. He was taken, listen to this, from prison. It's right here. He was taken from prison and from judgment. Who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. He made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Because he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. See, he had to be bruised to rescue Adam. See, that was the whole idea. He gonna get Adam and the rest of his Adam family. But it was Adam and Eve that he come to rescue. Yes, Amen. So now he's on the cross. Let's go there. He's on the cross. They're going to beat him as much as they can beat him. And the man that was beating him beat him so much that he fell out. But Jesus got up and carried the cross. Now ain't no weak man going to do nothing like that. He got up after all the beatings, all the slapping, the crown put on his head. Amen. They slapped him around, beat him around, beat him with whips, beat him with arm and rod, and here he is now carrying the cross. Yes, sir. Y'all don't hear me. Yes, sir. This strong man, ain't no weak man can do nothing like that. Jesus was a strong man. Strong. I'm going to show you even more. All right, let's lie on the cross, right? There are two thieves, one on either side. And here's where we learn something. One thief said, well, look, uh, save yourself. And, and, and then save me too. If you, Lord, save me, the other one said, wait a minute now. Wait a minute, hold it. He ain't done nothing. You and I, we deserve to be here. We done done wrong. But this man ain't done nothing. Now, the point I want to bring out to you right here is after all these whippings and beatings and slapping around and the scourge, Jesus on the cross holding the conversation. Yes. Did you hear what I just said? Uh-huh. Yes. Anybody here ever had surgery? Yes, sir. When you come out of surgery, how much voice did you have? Yes, sir. None of it. You can hardly whistle. Because all your strength is gone. But Jesus up there, after they done beat him for half the night and the morning, he up there holding a conversation. He's still doing what God told him to do. To seek and to say that which is false. Even on the cross. What's the point I want to make here on the cross? Amen. Jesus is the strong man because some folks say he took time from dying, but he never was dying. But he took time out of being beat and saved the man on the cross. Now that ain't enough. He, 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 he was talking to John. He said, John, behold, look at your mama. This is your mama now. The strong man. Jesus is the strong man. Only Jesus could take what he took and then save the world. Yes, Amen. He tricked the devil. The devil thought he killed him. Yeah. And then Peter thought he killed him too because he said that. But Peter wasn't there when Jesus died. He had to run off. Only John was there. When Jesus died, he says, Father, now this is how he died. He said, Father, into your hands 
I commit my spirit. In other words, he didn't die from the blows they gave him. He didn't die from all that they did to him. But when his time was up, he said, Father, unto thy hands, I commend my spirit. Well, the people thought he died from being beat. No, he didn't die from being beat. He put his hand, his life, in the Father's hands. Because he's a strong man. I heard him say, if I lay my life down, I'll pick it back up. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. Verse 10. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Amen. I think I said enough today. Does anybody know who the strong man is? Anybody, if you didn't know today, do you know now who the strong man is and why he was the strong man? He was the strong man because God made him the strong man. Amen. How are you going to kill God? And he was God. He said, well, nothing created that he didn't create. Amen. But yet he came and gave his life as an offering for sin. Yes. Amen. That we may come out of the earth, that prison down there, and go up to paradise. Yes. yes. Amen. God bless you today. Jesus is the strong.